With this, we now head towards the last session of our seminar. For this seminar, I would like to invite the panel members, Mr. Kaushal Mehta, Ms. Deval Suparkar, Mr. Hiren Doshi, Mr. Mukul Sachan, and the panel moderator, Mr. Krutan Patel, on stage. To give you a brief background, Mr. Kaushal Mehta, with 26 plus years of experience in BPO and electronics uh, industry, is the founder and CEO of Motif Inc. Ms. Deval Suparkar is the owner and head of corporate communications Make Money Group. Mr. Hiren Doshi, with experience of over 20 years, is the VP Finance of Rolex Rings. Mr. Mukul Sachan is a co-founder and COO of Lending Card, with 12 years of long career, which has been a culmination of a diverse range of experiences across industries, roles, and functions. Our panel moderator, Mr. Krutin Patel, with an experience of 10 plus years in, uh, in the field of corporate advisory, M&A, equity funding, etc., is the director of NRS Advisors. The detailed pr uh, profile of the panel members can be found in the booklet provided in the welcome kit. I would now request Mr. Krutin Patel to take over and begin the panel discussion. Good afternoon, everyone. I can see some hungry faces. <laughs> Apologies for the delay. I would like to thank all the panel members sitting here and accepting our request for attending this event. I would also like to draw the attention of the audience that we have a very diverse and versatile uh, panel here from different sectors. Without wasting much time, I would like to start the panel discussion. My first question is to Deval Soparkar. Make Money Group promoted two major ventures. Make Money Organics was the first to raise private equity as early as in 1997 when Gujarat was very new to private equity, probably the first uh, in Gujarat. And also you successfully provided exit to your investors in 2004, to listing in Singapore Stock Exchange. To what extent you would attribute the growth of Make Money Organics to early stage private equity investment? Uh, hi, this is Deval. And, uh, our company, Make Money, is about 1,500 crore turnover, and group put together is about 3,000 crore. When we talk about 1997, when I was, I still remember I was in 11th grade, and uh, the private equity placement in our company happened. That was my first official meeting, when I was being called by my father straight from the school to attend the meeting. And a uh, lot of things, what, uh, or the issues that were discussed in the first session, that uh, uh, someone said that if there is an issue uh, or how would you find out that the promoter is committed to the business or something like that or in a difficult time, how would they address? And I still remember that when Jardin, uh, Jardin was one of the funds who invested in, in us in 97, which was pretty early uh, in that era, uh, they said uh, that when they visited our site, we were uh, trying to raise about 33 crores from there for our pigment blue expansion uh, at Panoli. They said they found my father in one of the reactors because there was an issue in the reactor and he being a chemical engineer, he was addressing the issue along with the technical team. And they said that if a promoter of a company can go down to this level to make the operation successful, then they can do to any extent to make all the operations successful. We believe that whenever the private equity placement came, uh, somewhere down the line, we have to draw a, a, a line between ownership and management. So if you are an owner, but if you cannot include the investors as part of your management bandwidth, then the private equity placement will not be successful at all. But there are challenges, because investors will live for quarter, or three years, or five years, whereas if you ask my father, he will say, I'll leave my children to my So there is no time frame, right? Uh, you are looking for two decades, three decades. They are looking for two years, three years. The goal, the ultimate return from that company will be very, very different. But I believe that that initial investment that came in, not through IPO, but through private equity placement, uh, helped us to become the largest pigment manufacturer in the world for blue and green pigment. Uh, we give, give our green to US dollar notes also, and earlier to our old 500 rupees note also. So that belie we believe that, that that became a founding or a stepping stone for us for succeeding in the international arena. Thanks. Thanks, Eva. My next question is to Kaushal Mehta. 
who is a professional turned entrepreneur and the founder of Motif. Motif was incorporated around 2000 and had a private equity investor from the beginning. Do you think the presence of investor from day one is desirable for any new venture? So I think uh, that depends on the kind of business. Uh, before Motif, for just under three years, we had a software development company, which we ran for about two years and eight months. And we realized that uh, the BPO industry in India is just about starting out. But that industry was different because it functions only on scale. In the software industry, you could at least start out, let's say, by getting an office on rent and buying computers. This was a scale business. So we decided that if we wanted to do it right and not compromise, uh, we would probably want to raise funding from day one. Thank you, Koshul Rai. Um, my next question is to Hiren Doshi. Thank you, Hiren, for coming on such a short notice due to inavailability of Mr. Manesh Bhai. Uh, Rolex was on the roll when you raised private equity in 2007, but soon faced turbulence due to global meltdown from 2008 and made a successful comeback since 2013. I would say that the journey of Rolex has been nothing less than a Bollywood film, where you see all the shades of life and in the end, all is well. How would you narrate the role of private equity in your journey so far? Good afternoon to all. As Kurtin Bhai was mentioning that it's a story like Bollywood film, uh, like that. Uh, see, we had an equity investment in uh, late 2007, and thereafter global meltdown came, and we were struck in uh, or rather, we were trapped in such a situation where we were not able to even, you know, run the company to absorb my fixed cost also. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, by the 2007, uh, where uh, we had a saturation, you know, uh, as Darshan Bhai was mentioning one point very correctly, that uh, every time that is not available in certain business. And in certain business, there is an, some saturation point where the financial institution are not ready to go beyond certain that leverage, that equity leverage. So that was the point where, and we had a big expansion plan at that point of time, uh, almost uh, doubling our uh, capex or rather our uh, existing net block at that point of time. And we had a huge plan of setting up altogether new facility with the more uh, value addition, which will be the gateway for the global giants to come into our uh, platform. So at that point of time, we had an equity investment which gave us, which allow us to set up that facility. We raised somewhere about 151 crore in 2007 and we spent more than 350 crore into our capex by settling a new plant. And today we have revived it in such a way with a very healthy EBITDA margin and with a good uh, incremental in the top line. We are today in a position because of the capex what we made in 2009 and that is the why because of that capex only the global giants, the global automobile car manufacturers are, are in our customer basket. So that is the way equity investment has helped us a lot. During the tenure of uh, this eight to nine year span, they were always a friend, philosopher and guide to us. Obviously, uh, Whenever uh, if you go to the doctor, in a, if you if he gives you an injection, it pains initially, but ultimately it reforms for your better health only. So today, uh, initially couple of years, it was a matter of pain because there were some kind of uh, what you see extra suggestions, push-ups to increase the business, and then. But thereafter, it is a completely friend, philosopher, and guide, and they supported and they always help to increase our corporate governance to increase our, uh, and they all also, you know, sometimes they learn how to increase our enterprise value, which in turn increase our in equity value also. So it's uh, quite good experience. Yeah. Thank you, Rin. Coming to Mukul Sachin, a young entrepreneur who started his FinTech Venture Lending Card with the help of Venture Capital, and in a short span of two years, they have raised three tranches of equity from Venture Capital and Angels, 
Mukul is successfully managing the company with majority investor directors on board. We would like to understand from you that managing a business with a board having majority investor director is any way hampering the entrepreneurial decision making process. Yeah, so uh, when we talk about like uh, if uh, external money is affecting the decision making business, we are probably having that assumption like if the investor money comes in, they would like to interfere in the say operations or the daily management of the business. So I think I'd like to set a context to it. So we have raised around uh, 26.6 .6 million dollars, like 174 crore rupees over a span of two and a half years. And uh, all of it actually came in the first two years of the inception of the company. So uh, when you are growing that fast and uh, like as Mr. Patel already mentioned that this capit uh, capital is more of a catalyst for a faster growth. So uh, here again I like to uh, like bring a point. So there are two ways of managing a business I, or like building a business. You build a like 50, cro build 50 crores of business over a period of 10 years and 100% of it or you build a thousand crores business over a span of four years and you own 40% of it. So there are two management styles and as far as the this notion of like whether in, they would interfere in the business or not, we have to understand why the investor is investing in your business. So what does he bring on the table? He brings in the funds and as well as sometimes the perspective which might be different than yours and not necessarily worse off. And uh, why is he investing in your business? Probably he finds you to be a better expert of your business, like as Madam already mentioned. And uh, also he has no scope of giving that full-time commitment to the business as you can give. And what do you bring to the business? So you bring the hard work, passion, expertise and competence to it. So as far as you are delivering the things which you are like in an implied way promising to the venture, there is no need or scope for anybody to interfere in it. Like as far as you are delivering in any performance and whether you own a minority stake or majority stake but you prove that there is nobody else who can bet manage this business better than you. There is no scope of like external interference uh, in it. So if we talk about like daily operational decisions, definitely it's 100% taken by you. Uh, he has neither time, neither want, would he like to delve into it as far as he realizes you are doing it better than him. And as far as there are strategic decisions which affect them and their stake, because we already discussed it's a relationship of mutual trust and respect and where the interests are aligned. So as far as like even the decisions which you might take on your own and uh, take care of that uh, mutual interest which is like shareholder value creation, there is no need to be worried about it. Basically that's what I would like to say. Yeah. Thank you Mukul. Uh, my next question is for Kaushal. Uh, Motif would have passed through some challenging times during the entire journey of more than 16 years. Can you share one of the most challenging situation and how your investors responded to such situation? Okay, so maybe I can start uh, one of our earlier days. So I was talking about uh, why we raised capital. So in our business, you have to show your capacity before someone outsources to you because all clients and 85% uh, of our revenue is from publicly listed global companies. So these are large companies who have presence in several geographies and when they want to outsource to you, the biggest nervousness is will this person be around? And if I say look give me your business then I'm going to build a beautiful center for you and that's when I will start doing work. So. When we went to our investors, uh, there is this uh, phrase called, it was an empty can and a good idea. So making a lot of noise, but there was nothing that we had. It was some beautiful thoughts and that's what they invested in. And we built out our first 200 seats with zero clients. Because when they came, they had to see that we had the infrastructure ready, we had a small team and we were sincere enough to do work, learn the business and execute. Today we have grown more than 10 times that in number of seats and are still uh, looking at uh, you know, more capacity. 
but that was the first one where someone invests when you say I have this beautiful idea. Have you done it before? No. Uh, do you think you can do it? Yes. Okay, we'll invest in you. But then we started out, no one gives you 200 seats of business, they give you 20. But you want to show that you have that. And for six months, we did their business and they loved it. So they said, wow, this is now making sense. We think we can hire 200 people. And we said, wow, that's, you know what entrepreneurs are, you work hard in six months, you grow 10 times and the story begins. And we started interviewing people. We had not made out job offers. But uh, we of course didn't have a conference room, so the Taj Umed, which was at that time near the airport and which looked good to some investors, we said, okay, that's what our interview uh, room is, because if you brought people to Motive, then there was not much to show it anyways. So now we have this group of people we are interviewing, things are going well, and this was a publicly listed company. Uh, we hear on CNBC that that company has shut down. And everyone was stunned that, look, your first client uh, trying to hire 200 people after six months of testing has actually shut down. And we said, okay, you know what? I also tried to be an entrepreneur. And good, I tried. Maybe it didn't work out. And we had come back from the US. Uh, both Parul and I uh, lived in Silicon Valley for 10 years with Intel, Sun Microsystems. Pretty much everyone said, you are crazy going back to India in 97 after living there for 10 years. And then we said, nahi, nahi, kuch karenge. And then this was the outcome. So certified uh, stupidity, crazy, everything. And then I said, okay, maybe that's good. We'll take up a job somewhere. And I get a call from one of our uh, board members, our investor for the past 16 years. He's on Wall Street. So they are, of course, you know, looking at this live. And uh, he says, Kaushal, I heard the news. These things happen. Go on. So. And I was stunned that this guy who was invested in this guy who said he had an idea and that idea did not materialize and he's actually telling me that these things happen. And a very recent example, 16 years later, so you know a lot of people express a lot of desire to invest in motive. We've actually never raised a second round of funding. So same management, same investors for 16 years, which is unheard of in this, uh, you know, a lot of space places. And um, someone says, look, we want to invest in Motive, we'll value you at, uh, you know, several X, uh, our initial investment, getting closer to the magic number of 10X and all. And here is what a board member who was here uh, last month said, um, I talked to your team and I talked to you and all, it looks like uh, uh, offers will always come, but you think there is still a lot of upside. Um, and I said, yeah, I do, but at some point I also want to return your capital because, you know, we want to sleep at night as well and you've been kind enough. He said, look, we waited, but if you feel that you can deliver, go ahead, I'll talk to the others. Now that's, uh, if I say this, people would not believe uh, because everyone's focused on how do you raise money and how do you exit. But I think behind all of these entrepreneurs need to move one step beyond, which is, are you trying to build something of sustainable value? Because really the money and the exit comes as stage number two. So when I talk about creating something of value, on day one we created our vision statement, continuous value creation for our customers, employees, investors, and society. Now that's cast in stone. So now, you want to say, how much equity do I give to my investors when I raise money? Well, we gave more than 50%. And one advice for entrepreneurs is don't worry about what it is. It is 20, 25, or 60. Because end of the day, if Narayan Murthy had two more percent, would he be more richer? And if he had 2% less, would he be less poorer? And you say, oh, he lost out. Narayan Murthy is poorer by 2%. So if it succeeds, it's better to have a smaller portion of the pie it does not matter. But that is why we said, okay, investors you gave, but what about you? So what we got on day one as founders, which was just a little shy of 50%, we divided that into two, and half of that, equal to what we owned as promoters, was left as employee stock options. 
So at 22.5%, Motif is the highest employee ownership ESOP pool in the country of India. In the country of Philippines where we also have our centers. And the highest of any contact center or BPO company in the world today. Now that was the commitment you had to make to your employees, not just think about what I am giving. Which means that whatever we will make when we create liquidity, exactly identical is what employees of Motif will make. Now when you have that kind of a value based uh, growth in mind, our employees have been with us for 16 years. And this is not in India, it is also in the Philippines. 33% uh, of the team that started 10 years back is with us. 25% of the team that started in 2000 is still with us. In an industry where attrition is 60-80%, our supervisory attrition, one level above the uh, agents, is less than 2-3% to annually. Now, when you have employees stay with you, building long-term value, your customers are bound to stay with you. Because now they have become experts in the client's business, they see the same faces, and one of our core values is challenge the status quo. So they discuss, debate, argue, challenge, Every new employee, we are about 2300 employees, Parul or I talk to them for two hours on their first day every Friday, in Philippines or in India. Now that's the commitment to values that we brought. So I'm talking about things which is not private equity, but end of the day, entrepreneurs should think about what are you trying to build rather than equity stake or exits. And therefore, employees also you created value. Customers stayed with us. Today, 66% of our revenue is with, we talked about 85% with public companies, 66% of them are with us for 14 years or more. In an industry where our contracts are one year, and any client can leave with three months notice. So my entire business can actually shut down in three months per all the legal agreements. So that's the value creation for employees. Now for our investors, we run the company Warren Buffett style zero debt, cash in the company is 3 to 4x what they invested, valuation is as I said several x getting to that magic number. So they are saying look you seem to be managing our money better than we can, let it be and you know they invest in many companies so some of them funds are past due, their deadlines so they have given their LPs shares of motive instead. And the last one is value creation for society. That also we didn't say that once we are 1000 crores or once we are 1000 employees then we will give back. We run the Motive Charity Walk initiative. That also is it's in its 15th year next Sunday. Where 58,800 people have walked and we have raised 5 crores for 43 different NGOs. So the society also has to get some value and all of these stakeholders if you take in stride then I think a lot of these things uh, will figure out, figure out themselves. So those were a long answer to that example of, uh, you know, investors, two examples, but how it all fits in. Yeah, I can understand. It's 16 years journey. Uh, uh, coming to here, what will be your advice to our fellow entrepreneurs sitting here about using private equity as growth capital? Very frankly, I'm too small to give you any kind of advice, such big giants. I'm just suggesting uh, whenever you feel that your business, by infusion of certain amount of fund, having no initial cost, I'm talking about initial cost only, and without any kind of liability on your assets, and if you are able to build in a multiple way during the span of next five to seven years definitely one should opt or one should go for a private equity contribution because private equity I do have study of three or four uh, small uh, industries where equity partners have uh, because of the fund infusion the company created a miracle so I strongly suggest if uh, in spite of going this thing because one uh, small thing uh, which uh, sir has told that increasing the value of your equity is much, much appreciable 
rather paying a cost to your equity partner. So even if you are losing your stake to some extent, even if you come down to a minority, at certain point of time it is always uh, quite beneficial or uh, advisable to grow and definitely you'll get the results. But one thing is sure, everything is subject to your performance if you do have your trust your patient your, uh, into your business and you know the each and every nerves of the business, then only one should go for it. Thank you, Dave. My last question for the panel is to Deval. Yours is a listed entity which gives you an additional option of raising funds through public route. What advice would you give to our fellow entrepreneurs? That is whether they should go for private equity funding over public listing. Is it the ease of fundraising through private equity or any other intangible which you would like to highlight? Or what's your opinion on it? See, Make Money Organics is a listed company. And uh, we had an option when we decided to float a, almost of the same asset-wise, same size of a company in 2007-8 time, Make Money Fine Chem Limited. So at that time, Make Money Organics is about 600 crore asset base. And Make Money Fine Chem, the initial project was of 600 crores. Uh, we had an option to put that whole project in Make Money Organics Limited and do the IPO or likes and then do it. We decided to put that Make Money Fine Chem as a sub subsidiary company of Make Money Organics Limited. And in MFL, we got funds from International Finance Corporation, World Bank. Uh, and they funded this project as a private, they have a private equity arm, and they funded the project. Uh, at that time, we looked at a couple of things. First of all, we thought having IFC on the board will give us a lot of ease in funding from other various Indian banks. Because when IFC approves a project, automatically Indian banks will feel that this project has been completely, thoroughly been due diligence for. So we have never heard local police guys coming and verifying the details of the promoters. And we have never been heard that CBI, has, CBI was asked for the promoter's history. But that is what IFC's typical framework is. But once it goes through, first of all, you get money at a much cheaper rate than the Indian banks. So for a greenfield project where an Indian bank will give you at about 11 to 12%, depend on the depend on the industry, uh, IFC funding came with fully hedged option at about 7% to us uh, with a moratorium of almost three years. So when you are doing a big capital investment project, you need that earlier moratorium. At the same time, I believe that what was discussed during the entire first round that you know you need to have a team. So my team is here who worked with us for a good 20 years. and. Promoters can have beams. They want to do private equity. They want to do uh, listing. They want to do NCDs. But you need to have a very strong team because ultimately they have to do a lot of documentation. And you should be prepared to these documentation with utmost sincerity and transparency because that is very, very important. So uh, when we get IFC funding, World Bank funding, automatically five Indian banks funded that project. So I believe that in MFL, uh, listing was, would not have been a good option. Private equity would have been a better option, and uh, uh, World Bank played a very development role. What Kaushal sir discussed about giving it back to the society, there one of the motive is that you know you empower women. So I'll be very happy to say that the power plant which we have, a 60 megawatt thermal power plant in our site, is completely run by three female engineers as part of the women empowerment in chemical sector initiation by World Bank, and that is where our case study was also discussed at a large forum. So all international investors and all would look at it. And when we want to do a strategic tie-up, probably IFC's equity to any of the technical tie-up or strategic partner, this would be looked at more favorably in the international market. Thanks. Thank you, David. Thank you all for your wonderful insight. I am sure this is a very short time to express yourself and share your experiences. But we can have a networking lunch where you know everyone can have their discussion with you on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, thank you, Mausam. We are. Uh, yes. Are we taking questions or? Uh, I guess uh, we, are we can short take questions. Time. We can take a few questions, a couple of questions, if there are. We are running short of time. We are running short of time, so. Okay.
I would request uh, Mr. Rajiv Mehta, Mr. Ambar Patel, Mr. Nipam Shah to come on stage and present memento to all our speakers. And Mr. Tushar Agrawal as well. Tushar Patel, I'm sorry. Let's have a round of applause for our speakers. <laughs> Thank you so much for to, to all the speakers for being here and making this such an interesting session. Can I please request Mr. Nipam Shah to give the vote of thanks? That's just the last formality which I'm going to skip, kind of skipping. Thank you very much for coming. It is, uh, it is. As we